Good morning, grade 12 learners and educators. Uh, today, we are going to revise ledger accounts. Uh, by revising, I mean that you have already dealt with this topic during your normal, at the beginning of the year. We are simply now going to go through a typical exam question in preparation for the end of the year exam. You are free to send in your questions during the presentations and the questions will be attended to after the break. Today's lesson will last one and a half hour and, and we'll take the first break after the first 45 minutes. So at any point, you can ask a question and give it to educator who will relate it to us. Right, by the way, I am Mr. Masango. I am the provincial subject coordinator for accounting in, in, this, in this province. Right, company ledger accounts. The first thing that you need to, to know when preparing the ledger are the rules that are applicable when you prepare ledger accounts. Right? Now, in accounting, we group accounts into, according to their types. Firstly, we have assets account, then we have owner's equity accounts, we have liabilities, liabilities. These are the three main groups. Of course, we also have income accounts and expenses, and expenses. However, these are dealt with under equity. Now, what are the rules for debiting and crediting? We all know that the left hand side of the account is called the debit side and the right hand side of the account is called the credit side and that will apply to all the groups of, of accounts it is very much important that you know these rules before you can proceed to answer any questions on the ledger or the accounting equation because when we prepare the ledger we actually uh, apply the, the, the accounting equation approach right now, the important rule is that assets increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. Where, for example, when you buy an, a new asset, you will make an entry on the debit side. When you sell an asset, you will make an entry on the credit side. Right. Owner's equity increases on the credit side and decreases on the debit side. And the same applies to liabilities. They increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. That is why the accounting equation is assets is equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. You will see assets increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side, whereas the other two both increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. These are the rules that we are going to apply consistently throughout this presentation. Uh, just bear that in, in mind. Five. Now, I have an activity here for you. The activity says, the information below comes from the books of Masters LTD. The company has 50,000 shares authorized now you need to be able to distinguish between authorized and issued there was such a question in, in 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 one of the papers now authorized is the number of shares that you are able to offer for sale to the public is the number of shares that the company can offer for sale to the public Whereas issued are the shares that have already been sold, that are in the hands of the shareholders. I'm sure that that distinction is very clear. Here we say we have 500,000 shares that are authorized. Okay? Now, we have the following balances on one match. Ordinary share capital, we have 350,000 shares that were issued. And the value of those shares is 1,050,000. 1, 
the value of those shares is one million and fifty thousand. Uh, at this stage, you are not. You you can calculate the average share price because you have the value of the shares as well as the number of of shares. Now to calculate the average share price, average share price. You simply say one million over fifty, one million and fifty thousand divided by three hundred and fifty thousand. Now let's do that. One million, one million and fifty thousand divided by three hundred and fifty thousand shares. Now, as you can see, the average share price is simply. Three rand. We have taken the total value of shares divided by the number of shares issued. That gives us the average share price at the beginning of the year. Right. Then we are given our retained income at the beginning of the year. Then we have been given the SARS income tax balance of 7,600 and then the shareholders for dividend balance of 30,000 rand. Now, one may ask himself this question. Why with the SARS account do they indicate for us that it has a credit balance, whereas with the other three accounts, they do not tell us? The reason is quite simple. Is that is because this account can have either a, de a debit or a credit balance. Therefore, in each and every question, you will get an indication whether it has a credit balance or a debit balance. The others, you should know that these two accounts are owner's equity accounts and therefore have credit balances because, like we said, owner's equity accounts increase on the credit side and therefore will normally have credit balances, whereas assets increase on the debit side and will therefore have debit balances. Fine. SARS and shareholders, these are the amounts that we owe at the beginning of the, of the year. These are the amounts that we owe at the beginning of the year. These are the shares that were declared at the end of the previous year, but were not paid. The amount of 7,600 is the amount that we owe to SARS at the beginning of the year. Therefore, these are liabilities. These are liabilities, and therefore, they would have credit balances. These are owner's equity accounts and will therefore have credit balances. Now, let us go to our ledger and open these accounts with the given balances. Let us go to the ledger and open these accounts with the given balances. Now, I have my answer sheet, and then I write my date. It was 2013 in March, on March 1, and then I write balance brought down 1,050,000. And then, remember, I said these are owner's equity accounts, and therefore, they have credit balances because owner's equity accounts increase on the credit side. Retained income also on March 1, 2013. March 1, balance brought down 80,000. SARS, we said it has a credit balance of 7,600. The SARS 2013, March 1, balance brought down 7,600. And then I have my shareholders for dividends account. Shareholders for dividends is 30,000. 2013, March 1, balance brought down 30. Thousand. Right. That is for easy marks that I have just accumulated for, for myself. By simply knowing 
that ordinary share capital and retained income, uh, owner's equity account, and they have credit balances, and that SARS income tax and shoulders for dividends are liabilities, and therefore they have credit balances. But I must emphasize, I must emphasize that in certain questions or activities, you may be told that SARS have a debit balance. You will see at the end of the exercise that that is possible. If the provisional payments exceed the tax liability at the end of the year, then your account will have a credit balance. But if the tax for the year is more than the provisional tax payments that we made during the year, then we'll have a credit balance. I hope that clears matters for you, for those of you who, who did not know that. Right. These two amounts are liabilities which must be paid at the beginning of the, of the year. Right. Then we can go to our transactions for the year. The very first transaction, we are done with the opening balances.